Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we do the fridge fan mod to our Jayco Swan. It's a must have for any vans with three-way fridges and we're gonna use the Clever Cool kit provided by Royce from 3D Print RV. This is a fantastic, neat looking kit that is extremely easy to install. It comes with a comprehensive kit and very easy to understand instructions. So with summer just around the corner, it's important to keep your fridge all nice and cool and healthy. And using this kit, we'll show you how. Now, a few episodes ago, we did a tips and tricks video on the humble three-way fridge. And in that video, we touched on a future modification we wanna to do to our Jayco Swan, which is the fridge fan mod. Royce from 3D Print RV reached out to us and said he would be happy to send through one of his fantastic Clever Cool kits so that we could install that on our van. And we're gonna show you how smooth that installation will be. Not only do 3D Print RV have a whole range of plugs and accessories, they also have these cool color-coded key tags so you can easily identify and organize your keys for your caravan or camper trailer. He also does a number of other 3D printed improvements to factory models, including these fantastic latches, which go into our Jayco camper trailers. But anyhow, let's get into the installation and I'll show you what the kit's all about. So the kit itself comes with a fan assembly that is tailored to your specific vent. Now I learned something new in this, in that the vents on the side of your van are typically suited to the fridge that's installed in them. So this is a Thetford style kit that goes onto the Thetford style vent on the side of the van. So when you order these kits, let 3D Print RV know what fridge you have and give some details of the vents as they do vary a little bit so that they can simply click onto the rear of your vent and you're on your way. Now, what I really love about this kit is it's all Australian made and developed, and that includes the fridge controller and PCB board on its own 3D printed panel, which goes adjoining the fan onto your van. Included in the package is your full wiring kit, and it even includes cable ties. How good is that? Now, everyone loves pictures in instructions as they're so easy to follow, which is why I do these videos. And Royce is no different. His comprehensive instructions are fully illustrated with clear to read labels on what you need to do. It really is that easy. So what is the fridge fan mod and what does it do? So out here at the camper trailer, you've got your lower and upper vent that sit behind your typical three-way fridge. The lower vent draws air in, and then the idea is that the upper vent vents it back out. Now, as three-way fridges are absorption style, they generate quite a lot of heat, and they need that air flowing through to make sure they stay efficient. What used to happen was you would have a vent in the top of your bench, which allowed a lot of that hot air to escape through into the cabin of your caravan or camper trailer. That's not allowed anymore. And what people are discovering on really hot summer days is that the air still gets trapped in behind here and needs a little bit of help to get it back out. And that's where the fridge fan mod comes in handy. So what we are going to do is bolt up the fridge fan kit to this upper vent and it will automatically switch the fans on when it gets to that designated heat range and cycle the fans until they can bring it down below that temperature and in which case it'll switch them off. So it's a set and forget kind of system that has a low amperage draw when it's in standby mode and obviously draws a little bit when the fans are operational but they're cooling down your fridge, which will make your whole setup run a lot more efficiently. So with the Thetford fridge vents, it's extremely easy to remove these. You don't need any tools. You can actually just flip these tabs to the side and then you can easily remove the vent out of the back of the van. While you've got your vent out, it's a good idea to give it a really good clean to get rid of any dust and dirt and also pay attention to the cavity also as it's a good maintenance item to look at while this is out. So we'll go into the shed now 
And the first step is to install the fans onto this fan. Now that you've got your vent all nicely cleaned up, the first task is to test fit the panels to make sure you've got the right kit for your vent. And it's simply a case of sliding this on like so. Wow, that's a great fit. And it clips together just like that. Now it's just a simple case of feeding the cable ties through these slots here and securing them onto your vent. Now the attention to detail comes through again in that you start with a slot that has a little hole in it and then work your way around. Pretty cool. Now it's important to read the instructions here as I was just about to use the larger black zip tie to do it and I went that's a bit of an odd look on the front of a white vent. But if you read the instructions, they provide both black and clear. So you pick the one that is most suited to the vent you have. So if you've got the older white vent that we have here, you use the clear zip ties. If you have a newer model with the black vents, you obviously use the black and that'll make sure they blend away with your vent when seen from outside. So what I'm finding is easier is put all four in and then we can flip the panel up and then you can see where you feed them back through. And now with the vent back down, you can feed them in and then trim them all back off. Now we do the same process with the control panel and the hardware install is pretty much done. And voila! Now it's just a simple case of connecting these braided fan cables onto the controller board into these two receivers here. So they simply push on like so. Also note there's a longer lead and a shorter lead. So get them in the right order and then it's a simple case of just tidying it up with a small cable tie. So you'll see the cables actually sit into a slot that's printed onto the board and it has receivers for these little cable ties. So as long as you follow those instructions, you really can't go wrong. And there's the finished product. And it's this little attention to detail which really stands out with products such as these. So now you just want to test fit the vent back in before you go too much further to make sure it's all going to fit. which it does as I fully expected. And it is blowing a gale out here. We've got a bit of a change coming through. So I'm gonna take a short intermission here. We're gonna pack the camper down. That's part of our setup and pack down tips and tricks video. And we'll catch you back inside. So the kit comes with its own wiring loom with a connector that goes into the PCB board on the fan kit. And then it's just a simple case of routing these wires through your van to your battery or your battery management system. Noting the kit does come with its own fuse, you can connect it directly up to the battery. However, the general advice would be to use a battery management system wherever possible. We've got a Jayco and naturally they use a CTEC system for most of their vans. And you'll find once you have a look at the back of that system that it's got additional ports on the back so you can connect up your auxiliary 12 volt accessories such as this fan mod. So let's go into the van and I'll show you the process there. So in our SWAN, to get access to the cabling on the CTEC unit, you remove these two tabs, which provides the Phillips head screws that remove this cover panel. 
So we'll take this off now and I'll show you where the cabling goes in. Now what the plan is, is to pull our cabling in from a little opening down the bottom that runs through to our fridge. Follow these main cabling conduits up and then terminate our positive and our negative into one of the spare terminals on the back of the SeaTech unit. Jumping to the outside of the van, that cabling comes out just down the bottom here. So it's a case of removing the lower vent. And then you'll see the 12 volt feed wires that come through from the back of the SeaTech unit through the side panel and runs up to your fridge. So we're going to use that same hole to feed our wiring back through. What I will do is I'll tape this up so it doesn't get all caught up. So just put a little bit of electrical tape around the top of this, feed it through, and then you can pull it through from the other end. Now noting our fans fit into the upper vent, it's a simple case in the first instance of getting your cabling and feeding it down so that you can pull it through to the bottom and then we'll run it through into the back of the battery box and link it into the SeaTech unit. The plug and play nature of this kit means it's incredibly easy just to simply unplug this if you ever need to take the vent out for servicing or to gain access into the rear of your fridge. So you only need to allow for enough cable hanging out that you can successfully pull the vent off the side of the van and unplug it. Now you'll also know you get this sheathing in the kit as well. What I am going to do is actually put that around the cable that runs up through the hot section of the fridge up to the top vent just to provide a little bit of extra protection seeing as though Royce included this with the kit. Now the cabling's all sheathed. There's not a great deal in here to actually tie onto. We've got our wastewater pipe running through here and it's probably the best in that it's not going to get hot just to cable tie onto so secured in behind the cavity of the van and then the cabling just runs up to the top to the opening where the upper vent is. Now that we've got our cable run through I've measured what length I need so that I can terminate it onto the back of our battery management system. So now I'll just cut the cable off to the correct length and with our fuse we'll cut this so that you end up with a length out of either side and whilst we're connecting to a fuse terminal I don't think there's any harm in putting this seven and a half amp inline fuse in as well as a little bit of added protection. Just remember to put the spare fuse in with your kit so that you do have a spare on hand as these are micro fuses as compared to the standard fuses you have in our Jayco. So we'll strip one end, put on the terminal and crimp it off and then strip the other end. A crimp connector is supplied as part of the kit as well. So we'll crimp this on. And now it's just a case of shortening the positive cable on the cables you drew through from the fan controller unit in this length so that we can then connect this on and then the negative will be the right length to plug into the back of the SeaTech unit. Now it's important to check these around the right way from a polarity point of view. So in our case, the white sheath cable is the negative. Now, as you can see, my inline fuse is sitting up here where it's easy to access. And then it's cable tied onto the main cabling run that goes down and into the cavity in behind the fridge. We'll duck back out connect the fans up now and give them a test run. And now for the final step. You simply plug your terminal into the PCB board of the fan unit. And you'll notice this is working when the green indicator light comes on to show it's powered up. So to test the fans are working, there's a series of little switches here where you can control the modes of the fan. They're clearly noted on the instructions. Now what you do is you just flick the one that's noted test to the on position. It's a really small switch. So I'm just gonna use a probe from my circuit tester. Flick it across. And the fans turn on. How cool is that? Now with the fans running, you'll notice how incredibly quiet they are. So at night time, it's not gonna be a disturbance to any of your neighbors and given the ambient temperature typically goes down, these fans will probably turn off anyhow. By flicking the test switch back to the off mode, which will turn the fans off when you're testing them, that puts the settings back into the factory automatic settings. So in this mode, when the controller detects that the temperature is above 40 degrees Celsius, it'll flick the fans on and run them until that temperature drops below 30 degrees. It also has an audible alarm that will sound when the temperature gets over 65 degrees Celsius. So that's a pretty handy thing to have as well. So now we're confident this all works, it's time to put the vent back into the opening 
and we're pretty much done. Make sure the receivers have clipped on to the bottom of the frame here. So you can simply push it in and slide the tabs back across and your fridge fan installation is complete. You'll also notice a little green LED light. That's just a visual indicator that the system is on and running and connected to your battery source. Now we have simply done the external fridge fan mod. There is also an additional internal fridge fan mod, which then connects up to this whole system as well. You'll notice where your main power input comes in, that there's two spare terminals. They are the positive and negative feed that then run through the internal fans if you choose to fit them as well. So we are going to run this over summer and see how it goes. If we find we need some additional cooling, I might look into fitting that internal fridge fan mod as well. But if you're interested in this or both, I would not hesitate in recommending you order the Clevercool fridge fan mod from 3D Print RV. As I've said all along, the ease of installation is so simple. Everything keys in. It's a very nice, smart, well thought out setup. And it has to be one of the easiest around to install in that you simply connect two wires up, zip tie a few things on, and you're ready to roll. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Put a few comments down below. Like this video as that helps us a lot on YouTube. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, and have fun. Catch you next time.